Here we are in a three bed semi-detached property. I'm gonna show you how to soundproof this room. This is a lounge diner with a concrete floor. Upstairs, we have a bedroom at the front and a bedroom at the back. We've got an Artex ceiling. The homeowner here is hearing clear conversation. They can make out words and they can actually hear the TV presenter's voice on the TV. When the neighbors are on the FaceTime or having a Zoom conversation on their phone, they can actually hear what the person's saying, that the person they're speaking to on the phone through the other side of this separating party wall. So they're hearing everything from their neighbors. They're hearing the coffin, someone clearing their throat next door. They're hearing plug sockets, light switches. They're hearing everything. In this video, I'm gonna show you a way of soundproofing this wall. It's quite a thick system. It's not for everyone. Hopefully you'll be able to take some insights away if you're applying this to your own property. It's an old property. Uh, you can tell from Artex ceiling, it's quite an old property with the concrete floor. Because we have a concrete floor we don't need to do anything to that floor but if you are feeling vibration from the floor you might want to consider a heavy duty underlay to the floor when it comes to the fixes and fittings and the carpet first thing we're going to do is cut open the ceiling and it reveals holes in the structure we kind of knew there was holes in the structure because of the high frequency that the homeowner was hearing from the neighbors next door if you're hearing clear conversation maybe a tv presenter's voice that's high frequency coming through high frequency struggles to come through bricks and mortar so that will give you an inkling that you have holes in the structure another thing you can do for check for holes in the structure is you can go up in your loft check for holes in the loft and that will give you an idea of what you're in for in the party wall with this particular property with the age of it if you think of how long people have been walking up and down on these floorboards upstairs that's going to move the joist it's going to dislodge bricks as the joists go into the party wall creating those holes in the structure. To brick up those holes, we're simply gonna fill those with sand and cement. For more difficult to reach areas, you could also use an acoustic sealant. Some people might choose to use an expanding foam. I'd recommend don't use that expanding foam, even the soundproof version of the expanding foam. You see, expanding foam will cure uh, and it, the sound will travel very easily through that expanding foam compared to a sand and cement or maybe an acoustic sealant. After you've bricked up the holes in the structure, made the electrical safe, you can then start with sound dampening the wall. And here I recommend applying a 20 mil rubber. Now this is available in most countries. It's the same sort of product you get on the gym floors. Here we've used a 20 mil rubber and we've simply glued that to the wall with contact adhesive. For us, we're using two different types of adhesive, which we show you how, exactly how to do in the course. It's a bit too boring and complicated for me to show you in the YouTube video, but it's the way that you apply it which creates a resilient layer between uh, the existing wall, whether that's a brick or block or plaster in this case, or render, painted render in this case. You apply that rubber, and for this particular system, you don't need any mechanical fixings. Start sound dampening the wall and cover the entire wall and create that air tightness, tucking it up uh, all the way around the joist. Now this layer, it really doesn't matter what it looks like, just make sure you seal it all up and really do create that air tightness. What you've done here is you've created that air tightness, but also try and think of your wall as a ringing drum cymbal, especially if you're hearing that clear conversation come through and you've sound dampened that, you've put your hand on that ringing drum cymbal. By coating it in that rubber, the wall will not resonate anymore, so you won't channel the noise up into those other areas of your property. So what you do next will depend on your skill level, your budget, and your space loss. For this particular system, we're gonna use a floating frame, and you can see how it's not a traditional stud frame frame there isn't an upright stud fixed to the flanking wall and the top plate is isolated from the joist and the bottom plate is isolated from the floor we spaced out the upright studs to fit the rock wall slabs and there is an air gap between the wall that we've just sound dampened and the frame the anti-vibrational pads that we use on the top plate and the bottom plate is what we use under our industrial machinery to reduce the vibration of those industrial machinery getting into the structure. So if it's good enough for the industrial machinery, it's good enough for my floating frame. I'm not sure why people use a 5mm foam, a 5mm foam tape, uh, and they think that that creates some isolation. If you are sound dampening the wall with a 20mm rubber, basically use the offcuts of that rubber as the anti-vibrational pads for your frame. 
this floating frame is without a doubt one of the most important parts of your soundproofing. If you're hearing dogs barking, low frequency bass noise, if you're hearing kids running up and down the stairs, if you're hearing clonking and clanging coming through, can you see how if you sound dead in the wall and then you create that isolation from the wall that you've just sound dampened with the frame, how that's gonna give you already, you can see that that's gonna give you a massive reduction in noise compared to say a traditional stud frame where you've connected the top plate to the ceiling joists, you've connected the bottom plate to the floor and you've connected the upright studs to the flanking walls, you've injected the noise into the frame. In the description down below, there's a link to get a free book. You have to put your email address in, but it means we can send you a free e-copy of the Noise Free Home. Now, this is not a textbook. It's not a how-to guide, but certainly a, a useful book for any homeowner looking to soundproof their home. If you are interested in learning how to exactly install the frame and sound dampen the wall and all of the things that I've shown you in this video, I have a suite of online courses that helps DIYers and builders do exactly this. So if you're a builder and you want to install this type of stuff to your customers' homes, click the link in description. There's a course that shows you exactly how to do this. Next, we're going to insulate the frame with 100 mil rock wall at 60 kg per meter cubed. That's the density of the rock wall we use. And that's available from, from here in the UK. That's available from most builders, merchants, Travis Perkins, Juicens, what have you. And we find that that is the best product for the different frequencies of noise that you'll get from residential noise, room to room transfer of noise. Unlike other videos you might have seen from material suppliers sites on YouTube, as installers that have done thousands of installations, we recommend you insulate the entire frame. Insulate under the bottom plate, insulate above the top plate and insulate between the joists as well. Next, we've installed a mass loaded vinyl. Now, mass loaded vinyl it is one of those products, if you put it on the wall alone, if you just put it on a plastered wall or a block wall, it gives you little to no reduction in noise. I mean, you'll get less than one decibel if you apply this just to that plaster wall instead of that 20 mil rubber. But it's one of those magic combinations. If you apply it after the rock wall, for here we've applied it to the frame, it just seems to give a noticeable difference in the reduction in noise with and without the mass loaded vinyl used in this way. Notice how the wires of the plug sockets are coming through and they're sealed up at every stage. We're not going to cut a great big hole in the socket here. We're going to put the same material that we put on the wall behind the socket. You can still have flush sockets. You've just got to put the same material behind the socket as you do on the wall. If you don't put the same material behind the socket as you do the rest of the wall, we find that it reduces the integrity of the wall. Well, we should say it reduces the STC value of the wall by about three to five decibels. Next, we've used resilient bars, which we've fixed to the frame. Uh, so we've gone over the top of the mass loaded vinyl and fixed the resilient bars to the frame. Here we've used a wood screw or a drywall screw fixed to the frame. These resilient channels, they come in three meter length and they're available for most builders merchants here in the UK for about three pound for a three meter length. The next layer that we've used here is a fiber board and we've gone over those resilient bars with a fiber board. So you can see the lines of screws represent the resilient bars and the upright pencil lines. Not sure if you can see those upright pencil lines is where we've marked out where all the upright studs are so we don't compromise it. You don't put a screw uh, on the upright stud. You mark your lines out where your upright studs are like that and you mark the resilient bars all the way across and basically you don't put a screw where the upright studs are. Here we've gone over the top of the fiber board with a 15 mil sound block board. Again, you can see, hopefully you can see the pencil lines of the upright studs and the horizontal lines of the resilient bars. Now, when you apply both of these layers, make sure you use a four mil gap all the way around. It's good to have a good handful of four mil packers as you carry out this installation. And you just wanna create a four mil gap off of the floorboards because we're tucking it up to the floorboards above, around the joists, make sure there's a four mil gap, and off any flanking walls there's a four mil gap. You don't need to worry about a four mil gap when you join the boards but up to one another, but make sure the joins are all sealed with acoustic sealant. And then you can just see to the top right of this picture, we're just starting to insulate back. So after we've tucked the system up with all the layers, cutting it around the joists, you can see how tucking it up is about 80% of the work but if you really want to reduce that noise coming down at an angle if you're sat in your lounge and your neighbors are upstairs making noise uh, that might be kids running around in the bedroom or whatever it is reducing that noise coming down at an angle into your lounge this is really the best way to do that by tucking the system up here we've put 200 mil in the ceiling joist insulating back 
uh, 1.2 meters from the conflicting party wall and we're doing that because it's the size of the rock wall slabs the rock wall slabs come 600 by 1200 by 100 mil so we've put 200 mil uh, 1.2 meters back so the rock wall come back to about about there where my cursor is or about here okay on this particular layer we haven't sealed the screw heads but on the previous layer all the screw heads are sealed the reason we don't seal the screw heads on this final layer of 15 mil sandwich board is because sometimes the sealant will come loose it'll get caught in the plaster trowel because we're going to apply a wet plaster finish to this board and the plasters don't like it when the sealant gets caught in their trowel the next thing we do is we've patched up where we've cut a great big hole in that ceiling to insulate and tuck the system up so we've patched that up with 15 mil sound block board before going over the whole ceiling with the sound block 15. I haven't gone through all the layers in the window wall because otherwise it would be a very long video but we've basically applied our two inch 50 mil system to this window wall you can find more about that on my other videos and maybe look at the other video how to professionally soundproof your house and i go through what we apply to window walls in there there is a short mini course in the link below in the description and we show you exactly how to install this uh, 50 mil system which you can also apply to the separating party wall. It's a system that my installers install week in, week out. It's what we apply to stairwell walls and anywhere where space is at a premium and it's only two inches thick. So that's what we've applied to this window wall. So if you have a window wall before you do any soundproofing to see how much this soundproofing is gonna cost, I'd recommend put your finger in your ear and put your ear on the window wall. But put your ear here, but all next to the separating party wall, but also go and put your ear the other side of the window wall well not a lot of people do that they don't go and test it the other side for our homeowners here in this property they could hear the noise on this side of the window wall and that side of the window wall so rather than go up to the first reveal we've done the whole of the window wall this is the back of the property for this particular project for a lot of homeowners where their neighbors have, in, have put an extension on the rear of the property so this is the original back of the house and the neighbors have put a big extension out and therefore got an rsj maybe sat close to the separating party wall then the the homeowners here in this property they're hearing a lot of noise on this window wall as a result of the neighbor's new extension which is why we've put a really good 50 mil system on this window wall which will offer 80 percent reduction in noise here so our homeowners have got a little bit of decorating to do i think they might be changing the carpet as well uh, i think they're going for a, a hardwood or laminate floor here which is why we've not fixed the skirting back to this wall so we'll leave this project here and we'll see how the homeowners got on in a few weeks time with their noise reduction for this particular wall system we can expect an 80 percent reduction in neighbor noise from the neighbors to our homeowners that's 80 percent on the airborne noise and a 65 percent reduction on the impact noise that's from the, again from the neighbors to the homeowner that's a human perceived reduction in noise in terms of decibel figures it, it's kind of irrelevant really because there's lots of other areas where noise can come in the neighbors could be upstairs making noise any of you that are interested in decibels if you do think that is relevant when it comes to soundproofing a residential home then well this particular system will bring the sound insulation value of this room up to 63 db dntw plus ctr before soundproofing this room be estimated at about 42 db dntw plus ctr this room now with 175 mil space loss to the direct noise path of the party wall 50 mil space loss to the window wall and about 18 uh, millimeters off of the ceiling this room will put now come in at about 63 db dntw plus ctr this would be the sound insulation value of this room now that it's had all this sound insulation installed if you're a homeowner sat in this room after this amount of soundproofing done what can you hear if your neighbors are playing low frequency bass noise that like heavy bass noise then that noise will still come through most systems but if they're in the room directly the other side of this wall and they're playing that low frequency it will certainly sound more distant if you were to put the tv on or some sort of background noise you wouldn't hear that noise anymore if you're sat in the silence reading and there's a big alsatian barking next door then yeah potentially if you clock it you could make out that dog bark next door but a lot of people they just don't hear that dog barking anymore but it really does depend on what noises you're hearing i do expect some clonking and clanging to still come through this this system and if someone is uh, knocking on the separating party wall, drilling on the separating party wall, the other side of this wall, then yes, you will still hear that noise. 
all right guys i hope this little video has helped i hope you can take away some value from this put any questions in the comments down below and please give us a subscribe it really helps the channel if you can subscribe to the channel so many of you watch my videos and don't subscribe for those of you that are interested in following this same methodology to soundproof your home you might be interested in the free seven day soundproofing training that i offer it's the link is in the description down below also get yourself a free copy of the book the noise free home that link is in the description down below this is not a how-to guide it's not a textbook it's a book for homeowners that helps people with a noise problem understand where the noise is coming from in their home and the link is in the description down below and there's also links to the mini courses if you are interested in just learning exactly how to install all of this all of these systems to your home then check out the suite of uh, online soundproofing education courses I'll see you on the next video.